The internet and social media have come to connect us like never before. We now have the ability to share our opinions with millions of other users. It has changed our society in a multitude of ways from how we interact with others to how we consume the news. Sixty-eight percent of Americans received at least some of their news from social media in 2018. Sixty-nine percent of millennials get news daily from social media. We now have the ability to choose what news we receive by only following news sites that reflect our political views. This new way of consuming news has seemed to have created polarization. We now live in what is known as a postmodern society, but what is that exactly? First, we should know that postmodernism is a rejection of the ideas of modernism, in which numbers and facts were the only currency of truth in sociology. For example, in a debate, a modernist would pull out facts and figures to support why their way is better. A postmodernist, on the other hand, would argue the ideas behind their method. Jean Baudrillard described that postmodern society is defined by a less rational world in which symbolic interactions characterize society. In this era, the ideas are exchanged readily and often hold more meaning than what they represent. He believed media is a propelling force which shapes and distorts the general population's perceptions of events. Baudrillard, as well as other postmodern theorists, feared an overabundance of information, both real and fake, has led to a loss of reality referred to as hyperreality. The incredible popularity of social media and blogs has led to an alarming spread of misinformation. Movements such as anti-vax have the potential to negatively affect the health of thousands. Social media taps into a gaming mentality in which we are rewarded from clicking from post to post, liking, and reposting. This means people usually only interact with headlines and many do not read further into a news story. This is particularly problematic as news headlines become more exaggerated in an attempt to get people to click and read their articles. Another change brought about by social media is the ability for many people with similar opinions to communicate and share ideas much more easily than they ever could previously before. It helps ensure information, whether it is true or not, spreads rapidly and affects the opinion of voters much more quickly than it would previously. In addition, social media is particularly popular among younger people, and so it functions as a way for young adults to be exposed to political information and discourse when it normally wouldn't be nearly as accessible for them. This creates a unique demographic on social media that other forms of communication would not be able to reach as effectively. Furthermore, social media gives everyone a chance to easily see what everyone else's opinion is on political discourse. It creates a unique environment where you're able to look and immediately tell what sort of messages are being received well and by which groups of people. But what if every like, post, retweet, and click was recorded? How much could someone learn about you? About your friends? How well could they influence you? Social media has allowed politicians to communicate directly with voters for lower costs compared to in-person campaigning. However, politicians have been using data for years via micro-targeting, a practice in which campaign advertisements were tailored to users' interests. The Obama campaign used the internet to great success in the 2008 election campaign. This led to the opportunity for campaign companies to develop new tools and strategies for influencing voters using the internet. During the Trump term, Social media has been used as a mouthpiece for the president to freely communicate with Americans, often to criticize opponents. He has come to utilize flow politics with striking success. In flow politics, a politician avoids topics concerning real political change by covering such inquiries up with an overabundance of statements and unrelated accusations to redirect the conversation. This is best explained using the topic of conspiracy theories, it begins with one user posting a theory that people then discuss and add to, creating new theories and expanding on old ones until you are left with a mass of unintelligible claims and connections. President Trump has been observed to use this to great effect on platforms such as Twitter, 
when reacting to negative press, legal accusations, or political criticism. During the first two years of his presidency, according to Trump's Twitter archive, he has tweeted more than 600 times about Russia and collusion, more than 400 times lamenting fake news, and more than 200 times each about Clinton and Obama. Recently, the Trump 2016 election was criticized for using data collected by Cambridge Analytica. Cambridge Analytica was a campaign agency founded in 2013 by Robert Mercer and run by CEO Alexander Nix. In the 2016 presidential election and Brexit vote, Cambridge Analytica employed a novel algorithm that utilized data to influence voters. They gathered user data through somewhat questionable means. They used an app in which user agreements gave access to users' data. However, this app was also able to access users' friends' data, allowing Cambridge Analytica's al algorithms to gather data from an extremely large number of users. This data took the place of personality tests and allowed them to broadcast targeted ads based on personality types without the user's knowledge. This raises the question, what is democracy if we are unknowingly influenced by others who use our own psychology against us? Do we choose who we vote for or is it chosen for us by an algorithm? It seems clear that we need to establish ethical guidelines to address these issues or we risk the loss of our true democracy. It appears that social media has had an extensive influence on presidential elections, and it must be analyzed and discussed deeper to fully understand why. Studies suggest that with the rise of social media, political engagement has also increased. It is more convenient for voters to open up their laptop and engross themselves in election conversation. Overall, it's concluded that Facebook users tend to be more active during the general elections and therefore influence voter outcome because of the high population of people engaged in political conversation and influenced by political advertisements. Matt Tabby, a Rolling Stones journalist, holds an interesting argument for the extensive time people put into Facebook and what it means for democracy overall. He observed that Facebook has seemingly outgrown its original purpose as a platform on which people can simply connect with one another. Facebook has been observed to distribute data to advertisers and in some cases analyze that data to determine what products or advertisements users are most likely to be influenced by. Privacy has certainly been violated and it's obvious that there is an excessive amount of power wielded by Facebook. Another issue that arose with the introduction of social media was the participation of bot accounts in political discourse. Bot accounts are automated accounts that utilize AI. These accounts post regularly with some program to comment as well based on parameters set by their creator. They have been used recently to influence elections and promote polarization among voters. Investigations found that up to 15% of Twitter accounts are politically affiliated bots, and many only showed activity around the time of Western elections, sometimes posting up to 50 politically motivated tweets per day, usually using the same political hashtags as well. To top it off, while software for detecting bots exists, it is simply unrealistic for it to catch every bot, or potentially even most of them. Even the most sophisticated bot detection software frequently misses bots. This leaves the bots free to post and spread further misinformation and potentially influence enough voters to alter the outcomes of elections. Unfortunately, it is difficult to research the effects that bots have on voters. However, some experts suspect that while bots likely won't change anyone's political affiliation, they may be able to affect voter turnout. This has the potential to affect the results of an election, especially if the bots are more strongly oriented towards one stance than another. Bots are just one of the methods that have been used to influence elections through the spreading of false information. The CIA has a history of manipulating elections through a variety of methods. Before the internet, Media such as pamphlets, posters, and newspapers were utilized to spread false news stories in the hopes of influencing the outcomes of foreign elections. It is believed that with the age of the internet, social media and online news sites have become just another tool that can be used for the CIA to influence the outcomes of foreign elections. 
With such blatant meddling in the democratic process of other nations, what reason are those nations given to think that their vote counts? How can we say that we believe in the democratic process while our defense agencies manipulate the democratic elections of other nations? If we have the capability to influence other nations' elections, how do we know our own elections are not just as easily manipulated? Recently, in the 2016 election, Robert Mueller accused 13 Russians and three Russian companies in utilizing social media to spread fake news articles that attacked Hillary Clinton in an attempt to sway voters to vote for Donald Trump. Russians are aware and advocate engaging in an information struggle to achieve information superiority and create conditions for the government to achieve its political agendas in peacetime without armed forces. In this type of engagement, civilians are the target and social media is the battleground. The goal of such strategies is to weaken a country by dividing its citizens. Overall, social media seems to have negatively impacted the political discourse in the United States and countries around the world. While there is more political discussion and participation through social media, this discussion seems to often devolve into senseless accusations and name calling on both sides. Many feel betrayed by tech companies such as Facebook who have sold their information so users could be more effectively influenced by politicians' campaigns. With the abundance of information, both real and fake, we have lost the ability to know who we can trust to be telling us the truth. They could be a bot, an organization with a political agenda, or a media company only interested in exaggerating stories regardless of their truthfulness. In the end, it is clear there needs to be something done in order to help stop media from intervening in the government and politics. This could be with the regulations on how social media and data can be used by politicians in campaigning. The hundreds of millions of people active on Facebook and social media need to take the necessary precautions online when it comes to sharing information and believing the advertisements presented. Not only are your users being targeted, but their information is being stolen and exploited, creating an uncontrollable chaos. It is unlikely that we will ever be able to rid the internet of fake news it seems we have, in a sense, lost the idea of what is real when it comes to information on the internet. Therefore, as people living in a postmodern world, the burden of determining fact from fiction falls on us.